Hey there, quick-minded community. Thanks so much for joining in today. We are gonna get started in the next five minutes or so. Um, there is a chat box over on the right of your screen. So definitely make sure that you chat in there. Let us know where you're tuning in from. We love getting feedback and just seeing what's going on as we go through our webinars. So don't be shy. If you do have questions throughout this, I'll be checking in on there and peeking in on um, anything at all. Uh, like I said, we love creating a community here at Meet Edgar, so definitely let us know what you're thinking about, asking about where you're tuning in from. Um, my name is Megan. I am an onboarding coach here at Meet Edgar, which means I get to do a lot of super fun things when it comes to working with the small businesses who utilize our tool. Um, and if you do have any questions afterwards, you can always email support at meetedgar.com and we can follow up there. Um, but we will get started in about four minutes as the last few people do start to trickle in. Um, the replay of this webinar will be available at this link. If you do think this will be helpful for anyone else at all, be sure to share it out. We always love feedback. Um, so like I said, it's about four minutes till we get started now. So pop into the chat and let us know where you are tuning in from. All right, so we're gonna get started in about two minutes here. Like I said, pop into the chat. Let us know if you do have questions throughout this. In the comments below, we've actually got a lot of free downloadable gifts for you guys today too. So definitely pop in there and check those out. One of them is a blogging ebook. Content creation is so huge online these days and we've got a lot of great tips and tricks on how we structure our content creation at Me Edgar that you can check out. Um, we also have a really cool Social Brilliant ebook, which was developed by the founder of Meet Edgar, Laura Roder herself. Um, Laura is actually a really cool story in that she actually had an educational business in which she was doing all of this awesome webinars and teaching people how to use social media, but herself finding that it was taking so long to actually post on social media that she didn't have time to log in and actually update her feeds. So one of the things that me Edgar exists for is for her own needs. And as she developed the tool, it was something that she realized other people could find a lot of value in. Um, and that social brilliant ebook down there is actually her um, older class and a wealth of knowledge down there. So definitely check it out if you haven't yet. It's in the comments below. Um, so the blogging ebook, the social brilliant ebook, and last down there, there is a link to a getting started guide. If you do decide to use the Edgar software, the getting started guide in there is a great place to check out. It's wealth full of knowledge on how to actually utilize our tool, Meet Edgar, but it's also have some really cool tips and tricks on social media posting in general. So even if you're not an Edgar subscriber, definitely check it out just to up level your social media in 2019. So it is coming up here 1 p.m. in Denver, Colorado, where is where I am tuning in from, um, which means it's 3 p.m. on the East Coast. So let us know, like I said, where you're coming in from. The chat box to the right is where you can go ahead and let us know if you have questions throughout this. Um, like I said, those free goodies are in the comments below. If you do want to download any of those, they're awesome resources developed. And I'm gonna jump on in here as we get started with our less work, more traffic webinar. So first and foremost, we know that your time is your currency these days. It is so important to make sure that you're protecting your time and really making sure that everything that you do on social media and in your business 
is done with your business goals in mind. So we're going to keep this nice and short here. Um, but if you do want to keep the conversation going, definitely tweet at us. Our handle is at me, Edgar, and use the hashtag Edgar webinar. And we would love to continue the conversation after this webinar is over if you do have other questions. We're going to go throughout a lot of different tips that you can utilize to systemize your social media and up-level your brand awareness and digital footprint. Um, but if you do want to do this on your own system using something like spreadsheets, it's incredibly, um, it's actually possible. But if you'd like to use our software, Meet Edgar, to do this as well, um, we're actually offering a free month to the ClickMinded community. And you can sign up for it with the code ClickMinded. Um, and that'll get you a free month of the Edgar software that you can utilize when we're going throughout these tips. So jumping in a little bit more. The reason that Edgar software does exist, as I was talking about with the founder's story of just making sure that you're not working on your business all the time, meaning you're not logging into your social feeds and actually posting everywhere, but you're actually able to work in your business and you're actually able to do the things that are going to push your business forward in 2019. So one of the reasons tools like me, Edgar, and social media automation software does exist is to make sure the time you're spending is time well spent. So we're going to talk a lot about automation and social batching and some really cool tips and tricks around that. Um, but as you are going throughout this too, I want you to maybe take some time to track the time of where your business goes to know if social media software is right for you. And that is, are you finding that every time you log into social media, you're actually using it for personal use and scrolling through feeds as well when you should be posting for your business? I know that I get distracted a lot if I'm posting organically on social media all the time. So scheduling tools like Edgar can also help make sure that when you're social batching and getting in your creative headspace, that you're actually doing it in that time and not getting distracted by social media. So that's the one way to really know if social media automation is going to help you. So I take some time, track where your time is going so you can really uplevel your business. So as I was talking about, scheduling your social media content really does work because it's that time tested saying, saying that if you plan to fail, you if you plan, fail to plan, you plan to fail. Blah, that's a tongue twister there. And that's why writing your status updates in advance and using a tool like Meet Edgar's library and scheduling them when they should go out is so powerful. So what you really want to do is think about the times of day your audience is online, not when it's convenient for you to post. And that's why scheduling your social media isn't something that comes across as spammy, but it's actually so really respectful to your community because you're showing up for them and adding your value added posts when they are online and when you know it's convenient for them to see it. Now you can get this information in your Facebook insights, in your Twitter analytics, look at when the majority of your followers are online to start to gain a lot of that information. Beyond being able to um, make sure your updates are going out when your audience is online, not when it's convenient for you, having this really allows you to then have live engagement. And as we all know with the networks, as we all know with the algorithms, live engagement and community creation is where social media is going these days. They wanna see a lot of comments between people. They wanna make sure that the posts they're serving up in people's feeds are ones that add value to your followers. And one way that they do that is looking at those meaningful connections and conversations on a post. So social media really works when you're automating it to produce more engagement. So this brings us to our first counterintuitive fact alert. And that is, you might be saying, hey, Megan, you're talking about live engagement, but your social media automation tool. Yes, this is where the magic comes into play. You're able to automate your updates in order to produce that engagement. It comes across so much more natural when you're posting things like questions, when you're posting things like conversation starters, that you are actually then able to take some time at the end of the day, time block out maybe 15 minutes to go back in and reply to your followers, to go back in and have that one-on-one -on -one connection that's going to make them go, wow, this brand really cares about me. They are talking to me by name and they are making that human to human connection. Because when it really comes down to it, people buy from people on social media, not from brands. So the more humanizing your content is, the better. And social media really also is so great for brands these days because it helps you tell your story on what separates your product or service from everyone else. So the internet services and products these days are so saturated. 
as you can see here, you know, Meet Egger is not the only scheduling tool out there. And we want to make sure that the story we're telling is speaking to the audience that we're going to help. We want to solve pain points for the right people. And if it's not going to be a tool that works for you, that's okay. Many, maybe one of these other options is. So when you're on social media, don't be afraid to actually write your updates to tell a story about who you are for and who you are not for. Because that's going to really produce what we call raving fans, those people who believe in your brand and believe in your mission, that they want to go out and tell their friends about it. They want to have that brand awareness and really be an advocate for your brand. So make sure you're telling your story in a really authentic way so you're connecting with the people your tool will help the most. And one of the ways you can really do this is having some strong values behind why your product or business exists in the first place. You really want to make sure that you have these values set and you are seen as an expert and authority in your industry because people want to hear from what the cutting edge thought process is around this product or service. You want to be someone who people want to hang out with to get that information. So sitting down and really thinking about your purpose, how you're going to achieve that, and what the result is going to be can really help not only clarify your business goals, but can also help clarify your social media goals when you're trying to create this community and you're trying to create this movement around your brand. So having these core values not only helps in your business, but also helps create a lens of how every status update should be written. Sharing your values, sharing who your company is on social media these days is more important than ever. So many people are buying from brands and being loyal to brands because of the values that they hold, not necessarily just because of their product. So sitting down and getting this out is a really great way to make sure your status updates are connecting with the right people. If you want to um, dive into this concept more, I would suggest looking up this TED Doc by Simon Snick, How Great Leaders Inspire Action. And he goes through a process of this little diagram here, of finding your why in your business, finding how you're going to achieve that, and really saying, you know, what is this going to produce for my followers? And really, how is this going to add value to them? So moving right along here. After you come up with that why, it is so, so important to always remember again that people buy from people on social media. So being authentic is going to be the best way to get your brand to be really strong going into 2019. So we want to make sure that every status update is letting people know, like, and trust your brand. Because it really takes about seven touch points for someone to become loyal to a brand these days. Everyone is on a different journey when it comes to the buying process. Some of the people who come and follow your page might be ready to buy your product or service right away. Others might just be researching right now. So you want to make sure that your social media's um, updates are really speaking to each of these um, segments. So really hop on into your social media posts and look at how you can make sure you're nurturing those who might just be starting on the research phase so that your touch points come up and when they're ready to buy, your brand is going to be on the top of their mind. You also really want to make sure that you are thinking about relationships first and business second with your social media. People, again, really want to make sure they're having those one-on-one -on -one connections and knowing, hey, after I purchase this product or service, this brand is going to be there for me and help me use it to its fullest potential because look how they're treating me on their social feeds already before I buy it. So make sure that you're showing not only people who are part of your community already how much you care about them, but those that are just in that buying process. And social media is a great way to do that. And really, when it comes down to it, thinking about why people consume on social media, it is to be entertained. It is to be engaged. And really, they are, um, their attention is going to a place that interests them. So if your social feeds can be nice and diverse, and if your social feeds can garner the attention, then it's going to be that much easier for your followers to really come back and want to keep on following it. So be authentic, add your story in there, and make sure that you are nurturing each of your customers along their journey, no matter where they are. So we're going to hop into a three-step process here on really how you can do less work while driving more traffic to your site or product. And popping in here to start, the real thing that I want you to start out with is to develop your brand voice and audience personas for your social media followers. This is step number one. If you have not done this yet, take some time. 
possibly even take a whole day to plan this out with your team so everyone is on the same page. You can even do something if you're a solopreneur out there, like getting someone to bounce ideas off of. It can be so important to do this to make sure that your whole marketing strategy works together and is speaking in a relatable way to your followers. So developing your persona starts out thinking, you know, no matter what social media network my posts are showing up on, people are going to know my voice and they're going to know my color scheme. And that's going to help develop that relatability so much faster. So you can see as a post example here, we got tweeted at once. And because we know we're a casual brand, we're kind of a humorous brand, we're able to reply to that tweet in a voice. Anyone on our team could utilize our brand guidelines to know we're able to be a little bit more playful. Maybe your business is one that doesn't lean towards the playful side. So you want to make sure that everyone on your team, if someone is replying on social media, knows the tone to take. It also takes about six seconds for people to actually get that sort of picture recognition going to. So I always make sure that I suggest adding in brand color guidelines to your actual brand voice and personas as well. So that when people see your brand colors, it automatically triggers that and it gets that brand recognition faster. So people will stop and be like, hey, I know this is a brand I wanna pay attention to. I recognize their colors and actually read your posts a little bit more. The other thing about developing personas is it helps you talk directly to your followers. You know, this idea of relatability is huge on social media. People want to have that hey me too moment as much on social media as they do on real life. And one way to think about this is think about if you were at a dinner party even. If you are relating to someone being like, oh my gosh, I lived there too as a child. You love that moment, it gives you that common connection and you feel like you know that person a little bit more. Same on social media. And if you have a persona who you're talking to, it's so much easier to relate. So while you're developing your persona for who your social media followers are, I suggest doing something like you even can give them a name, give them an age, give them these qualities of traits that are really gonna provide helpful, um, helpful information to them so that they can have that, oh my gosh, me too moment when your post shows up in their feed and it becomes a little bit more like a real life conversation. <laughs> So speaking to your audience personas is really huge. And you can do this even when you're sharing posts about features and benefits as well. So when you can solve someone's pain point, it's gonna come across as a value added point uh, post so much. And having a persona knowing what my persona's pain points are, is it that she's a busy mom who doesn't have time um, to do X, Y, Z? Or is it that they're a businessman who really just wants to up-level his sales process? Knowing that and speaking to how the features of your product or service can help solve that pain point is going to be huge. You can also sell lifestyles and experiences on social media. And this actually works much better sometimes because we are such an experiential brain, um, experiential um, humans these days that we like when you sell experiences. Um, one thing that really is helpful in thinking about this is like an airline. You know, you don't sell the process of here, buy this ticket. That's not a really experience that I want to have. I don't want to have the experience of researching plane times and handing over my credit card. You want to sell the experience of getting to your destination, hopping off that plane in Hawaii, having that tropical um, adventure out there. And that's going to work so much better. So think not only about the features and benefits of your product, but also think about the lifestyle and experiences that you can provide to your followers. Moving on to the brand recognition aspect a little more. This comes into play a lot on Instagram, especially these days. It's a curated network that is so popular and it is something that has so much out there. You know, Instagram is categorized by hashtags. It's categorized by the Explorer feature. So your brand can be found on Instagram pretty easily. So you need to make sure when people find it, they know right away who you are. Um, Instagram is especially interesting because you do have this grid feature. So when you're setting up your Instagram and when you're thinking about your posting schedule, we always recommend thinking about those first nine pictures as some of the most important out there because those are going to be the first nine things people see to make that really great assumption of, oh, this is a brand who I connect with or mm, I don't want to follow this brand. For example, this is a fashion blogger, Kelsey, who has over 650,000 followers on Instagram. Now, she certainly isn't the only fashion blogger on Instagram. So how does she garner so much attention? 
Well, she does a really great job of making sure her feed is the same exact color scheme so her followers know what to expect. And consistently, she shows up for them, giving them all of the awesome value added content that she has to offer. One of the things Kelsey does really well that's important on social media is that she knows who and what her product is for. So you don't want to have a product that's for everyone because you're probably not going to be serving anyone at that point. It's kind of that idea that if you're trying to please everyone, you're not going to be pleasing your core audience. So you can gain a ton of followers like Kelsey here did with just being able to speak to your core audience of who you are about. So make sure you know all about your brand voice so you are speaking right to the people who are going to get the most from your product. Step two is developing your content. So once you have that awesome brand voice and that awesome brand guideline set for your team, it's all about developing your content on social media to get the most out of it. Now here at Meet Edgar, we have a tool that really is great for your evergreen content. That stuff that's gonna provide value no matter what time of year it's sent out at. And the reason that this is so important is because you put so much work into your status updates. You spend a lot of time being creative with it and making sure that it's going to speak to your followers. But oftentimes with the algorithms, only about 10% of your followers do you ever see anything you post on social media. And these days it is getting more and more crowded and the algorithms are cracking down more and more. You know, Twitter has a term of service now that says you can no longer send the same tweet to the same Twitter account more than once. Facebook is prioritizing friends and family's posts over anything else. Instagram doesn't allow links and comments, so it's sometimes hard to drive traffic. LinkedIn is prioritizing video more than ever these days. So oftentimes people are like, does the evergreen strategy still work? And my answer to you is yes, yes, it does. So we obviously use our own tool at Edgar here, and we see this work so much better than just a posting schedule where um, you're posting something once and then it gets lost. So as you're developing your content, I want you to think how you can develop it so you can repost it and get the most out of it. It's a really great thing to also think about how you can actually engage with your followers and make sure that you're using things like um, you know, live video is especially loved by the algorithms these days too. And you can use tools that are able to broadcast that live video on multiple platforms at once, making sure you're utilizing it in a really strong way. You can then download that video from your Facebook and repurpose it, making sure it goes out month after month. So all the hard work you did in that live broadcast isn't just seen by those live viewers. So there's a ton of ways that evergreen content still works on social media to authentically connect with your community. One of the reasons that evergreen content is so near and dear to our hearts here at Edgar is because we've seen it work. So this here is a graph that actually shows something that our actual um, is actually from our blog and the traffic we received from a blog post. So this upper one in the left corner here is something that is seen um, when a blog post is shared once. So if a blog post is shared once, you'll see that really great spike in traffic. You'll see that really great way that um, it's driving more people to your site. But then that traffic piddles off a little bit. Now the real magic comes into play when you're able to reshare that evergreen content and have it go out over and over again on social media. And that's what this bottom graph is because every time a blog post is shared again, you'll get different people connecting. Maybe they didn't have time to click on it the first time. Maybe they were in the middle of a meeting and just rushing around. Maybe it didn't speak to them at a time they realized they had a pain point your product or service could help solve. So by sharing it again, you're not only connecting with your existing followers better, you're also making sure that content is available for any new followers that you've gained since that time. So resharing that evergreen content, making sure when you're developing your blog posts, your value added content, that you're doing it in a way that it can be reshared on social media multiple times. And one of the biggest things that is so important in evergreen content is making a strong headline. And this really comes down to it that five times as many people will read your headline than the body of your copy. So when you are developing your headlines, I want you to think about using emotional words because that's what's going to really make people want to click on a link. We are curious creatures by nature. And if someone is, has a gap in their knowledge that you are there and able to solve, that curiosity almost drives us to want to click on a link. 
So make sure you are taking so much time to develop strong headlines and you'll see click-through rates really go sky high. Um, as you are starting to do this too, you know, think about your own consumption habits on social media. Oftentimes you will just read the headline and that oftentimes you'll notice that people will share links that they haven't even read the whole entire article from. It was just because that headline is producing something that they want to be known for. It is a status update that is up leveling that person's status somehow. So your headlines are some of the strongest things that you can take time to make sure that they are the best and strongest to increase shares on social media. So some ways that you really can do this is to make sure you're generating generating multiple headlines for each blog post or each piece of content that you are creating. So as you do start to generate more and more headlines, um, I want you again to think about emotional ways, but to also think about the ways that this is not just wasted time. So here at Edgar, we generate about 20 headlines per blog post that we write. And those headlines that don't get chosen as the one for the blog post can actually be used for status updates about the blog post so that it creates this authenticity. And again, those words that might speak to one person could be slightly different than the words that capture the attention from someone else. So generating 10 to 20 headlines for each content that you are writing is not a waste of time. It not only gets you the strongest headline for the piece, it also gives you some awesome status updates to diversify the way you're introducing that blog post over and over again on social media. So going a little bit further on this process, when you're developing these headlines, you can even do it starting out just super simple. You know, what would this article be called if it was in the simplest form? And from there, start thinking about the things that make it unique. Start really teasing it out. So here's an example here. You can say, read my new blog post. Or you can say, read my new blog post about cats. Both of those pretty dry. Or you can think about that curiosity aspect that we were just talking about. You can say something like, find out why I recently adopted 22 tabby cats. All right, now I'm a little bit more curious. That's something I am be interested in clicking on. And maybe taking it a step further even, can you handle 22 tabbies at once? The shocking story of one brave man who did just that. Now think about how much more rich this status update and headline is here at the end than that first status update that just says, read my new blog post. So it is a process, it takes some time, but always think about emotional words and curiosity and how you can add them into your status update and you're gonna see really awesome success when it comes to click-through rates on your stuff. So when you're reading and when you're writing these status updates, you really wanna, again, make sure that you are thinking how to spark comments. And that is because all the al algorithms are looking for community creating posts more than anything these days. So how can you create that conversation between people? How can you make sure you're compelling people to want to talk back to your brand, to want to be your brand's friend, and the algorithms will reward you. So keep that in mind when you're writing these status updates and when you're writing these headlines too. If you are running into any trouble at all trying to think about how you can be unique and stand out on social media, especially as you're developing a new strategy for 2019, I wanted to throw in some questions that it's really helpful to ask as well. And that's what's something you do or you've done differently. You know, social media is so great because it does provide a lot of value and it has a lot going on and there is a lot of chatter out there. So you need to make sure that your voice is standing out and your thought leadership around the industry is standing out. So you can think about things that have changed in the news around your industry and add your voice and opinion to it. And people will respect that as unique content because you are the only you out there when it really comes down to it. Think about different kind of what's new and exciting within your niche and don't be afraid to talk about other people's content as well. You know, sharing other people's content on social media is a really good respectful way to make sure your followers are incentivized to keep following you because they then don't have to go out and seek that content. They can know that your Twitter feed has a nice curated way that's offering them the best content out there regardless of where it comes from. I also always like to say, you know, have something that you've learned from recently be a status update. Um, even if you have like a how to, you know, how I went throughout my day really efficiently today. These kind of things speak wonders to your audience because it lets them peek behind the curtain. It lets them get to know you with that behind the scenes content that much more. And it's really something that you don't want your followers to have to reinvent the wheel if you already have some pro advice on that topic. 
So think about something that you've experienced recently, how it's changed your life, and share that out with your community. Last but not least here, don't be afraid to diversify your authority. You know, here at Meet Edgar, we are a social media tool, obviously, but we also are a remote work team. So this is our founder, Laura Roder's Twitter account here. And you can see she's asking a question about who's working with their spouse and if it's fun or a recipe for, for disaster. This doesn't have to do with social media at all, but being a remote workforce, we do have people who might work with their spouses. Being a community who we know we have a lot of entrepreneurs and solopreneurs and family businesses utilizing our tool, this is a conversation starter that even though it's not directly related to social media, is still something that we are experts in. So think about the diver diverse ways that you have knowledge in that doesn't necessarily align exactly with your, um, with your product, but can also be something that you are an expert and you can speak to. You know, going along this further, it's not only a simple question we ask here, we've actually gone so far to diversify our blog around remote work. So this is an article from our blog here, what do you need in your work from home survival kit? So this can drive traffic if we share it on, on social media from people who aren't necessarily in the need of a social media automation tool at the moment, but might be a remote worker themselves. They can get great value from our pro tips in this blog post. We can gain them as a follower now, and then maybe future along the way, we can nurture them into showing them, hey, social media automation is the way to go. Or maybe they have a friend who needs a tool like me, Edgar, and they've heard about our brand because we've diversified our content in this way. So speaks wonders to getting gaining more followers as well as nurturing those people along the customer journey if you're able to diversify your content a little bit more. And when you're sharing it out on social media and um, also, you really wanna make it as a relatable as an experience as possible. So you can see in our status update here, we say, when you work from home, you have to work harder to set boundaries. Here's how. That is a relatable experience everyone can have. You know, when you are getting up at the end of the day, you need to make sure that you're shutting that email down or else you could think of your home as your office all the time. So think about those relatable ways when you're diversifying your content as well. And this is really where it comes into play to know your persona, your audience persona that we talked about at, on that first slide. Um, so you can talk right to them while you're diversifying your content. As you are starting to create your content in this step two for less work, more traffic here, I want you also to think about the words you're using in your status updates to lead people to the sale. You're not selling to them. You're making an elegant sale knowing that your product or service is really going to up-level their experience. And how you do this is to use what we call desire words. And this is using things like the word want over the word have or the word love over the word need. So a phrase here at the bottom you can see is, you are going to want to buy this because you are going to love the results. Think about how much more compelling that is than if I had said, you are going to have to buy this because you are going to need the results. So desire words are gonna lead people to the sale. It's gonna nurture them that much better. So if you're producing promotional posts on social media, which we'll talk about in a bit here, um, think about the ways that you can lead rather than push people with desire words in your status updates. So social media content creation these days is going more and more towards video. Video is being hugely prioritized in all algorithms, and it's something that can produce such great authenticity. You know, you can't really hide who you are if you're right in front of the camera. You get that great eye connection with people, and it really helps open up that know, like, and trust factor in a way that text just doesn't. So I'm going to encourage you all to take a challenge and add video to your social media strategy in 2019. You want to make sure that you are connecting in ways that the algorithms are rewarding. If you're afraid or if you're a little bit camera shy, um, I suggest testing video out in the stories feature on Instagram or the stories feature on Facebook. And this is because it's only going to last there for 24 hours and then it's going to be gone. So it's a great way to start testing out and becoming comfortable on camera. Um, and if you're thinking about, hey, I would love to do video content, but I don't even know what topics I would talk about, I would suggest using your already established content to guide your video strategy. 
So go out and locate your blog posts that get the most traffic. Go out and locate your posts that get the most questions and actually start to think, how can I repurpose this into a video? How can I talk about the main points here so that I am providing my community the medium that they want to consume this content in? Someone might like to read more than watch video. Some people might watch video better than they want to read. So make sure you're providing all of your great expertise in as many mediums as possible to provide it to your followers. And as you are starting to make videos too, don't forget about using things like that headline creation as your status updates. Repurpose those videos, even if they're live ones, share them out uh, month after month so that people can always have the time to watch them later on. And you never know which headline is gonna grab someone when. Um, so don't be afraid to repurpose some of your strongest content out there into videos and reap the rewards that the algorithms are giving these days. So as you're creating content in step two here, I want you to also think about not only diversifying the content in your niche and industry and what you're talking about, but diversifying the posts that you're sending out on social media. No one wants to follow a feed that's just promotional post after promotional post. People want to be able to see a holistic view of your brand and really get to know you on social media. So I wanted to offer real quick here some other types of tips and tricks on the types of posts that you can send out. Behind the scenes content is killer on social media. It really lets people know, hey, this brand cares about me so much and I'm getting something exclusive that other people aren't getting by following this brand on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. So show that behind the scenes content about who's on your team, about you know some successes and failures that your business has gone through so people can really see your brand and get that great, hey, I'm getting something by following this page feeling. Things that inspire you, social media is so big for inspirational and funny content. This is a great way to diversify your content with different quotes, with different just inspirational musings that happen throughout your day. And these things get shared so much in a way that it's actually um, pretty shocking. So test out sharing inspirational things to really start your community out and really giving them that sort of value added inspirational moment in their day that you never know if they just might not need it at that time. And that emotional connection they'll then attach with your brand and that thanks for inspiring me moment will go be seen in wonderful ways. And they'll most likely wanna share it out on their own page, which gets your brand in front of their followers' eyes, making them a part of your marketing team. Share your favorite tools, share your favorite tips with your community, let people learn from you. Other people's content, we really touched on that already on how you wanna provide your followers value, no matter where it's coming from, um, you couldn't stop laughing because posts. Make sure your community knows how much humor goes behind things if you're a humorous brand. Humor and inspiration do really well for share-worthy content on social media, so test it out if you haven't before, and you'll see that people are gonna like this funny content um, quite a bit. And that's actually a signal to the algorithms that they're liking this more diverse content that you're putting out there to serve up posts in their feed from your brand more often. So it's really helpful to get these inspiring and funny posts out there so you can get those likes, so you can get those comments on them. So then maybe your more promotional posts are much more likely to be shown in their feed in the future. Ask questions, again, we've touched on this a lot, that in meaningful engagement and people actually commenting on posts is being seen so much more as value added to the algorithms these days. So ask questions there. Um, I touched on this one too, successes and failures. Make sure you are letting your community know that they are not alone and you are there to help them. Moving along to one last content creation tip here is to share testimonials. And this goes with that no like and trust factor I was talking about. So testimonials are huge because they are a way of providing social proof, but you need to do them right. One thing that I like to make sure we're touching on here is to add emotion into your testimonials. So don't just ask someone what they liked about their product. Make sure it's going to be compelling to a new user who might just be thinking about starting your product or service. And that is to ask your users, you know, what did it feel like before you purchased this product? Likely people who are following you on social media might have those same feelings. So it'll be that relatable experience. Next, ask your followers, you know, what did it feel like when you pulled out your credit card? This gets to a really juicy part of people being like, oh, I was a little nervous handing over my credit card details, starting a new service. 
And last, what does it feel like now having this product or service in your life? And that's that hero's journey moment where you can get someone over the hump, get that relief saying this up leveled my life so much. And that's going to really talk wonders into making sure that those who are still considering your product know other people have had these same feelings. They have this relatable experience and they see that it is actually helpful. So user generated testimonials are huge on social media. I also always suggest if you're able to use a program like Canva, making sure your testimonials stand out on social media with a really visual image in it. You can see in the bottom left corner, this is a testimonial we have from me, Edgar. Um, and this is a super simple thing. We don't have an in-house designer. We have just have a really great Canva account where we can pop in there and make sure that this isn't just a text only um, update, but you get that great human face on there and it's going to show up so much better on social media than if it was just a text only. So think about ways that programs like Canva can do the heavy lifting for you if you don't have a designer in your budget. So as you're starting to diversify your content to wrap up here, really make sure you're doing that curiosity aspect that we were talking about, having people think, you know, huh, I want to learn more. So you're compelling them to click on your links and driving more traffic to your site. You wanna schedule that funny and inspirational content in between your promotional content as a signal to your followers that you wanna provide those little nice moments in their day and also a signal to the algorithms that people wanna see more of your content. <laughs> It's really going to help you build community and it'll really make sure that your feeds aren't seen as just salesy feeds, but they're seen as community oriented feeds, keeping the social in social media. So popping along short here, I want to also make sure when you're creating your content, you're thinking about mobile sites as well. And that's really because your followers, while you're not creating content, on mobile sites, they are consuming it on mobile sites. Six out of 10 people who use Facebook at least once a month are only using it via mobile. So when you're creating your content, there's a couple of differences, especially on Facebook, that I wanted to point out real quick. The post over here on the left is one that is shared on the desktop view. The post on the right is the one that's shared on the mobile view. So you can see on the desktop view that description is included below the title of the post, where on the mobile view, that description is not included. So as you're developing your status updates, make sure if you need to add any more text above the link you're sharing, that it's there in a way that's going to be helpful to your mobile community as much as your desktop community there. Um, so if your headline doesn't explain everything you need to, make sure you're putting it in the status update because the mobile community will not see the description there. So there's a lot of things to think about to make sure you're respecting your community's time and to make sure they can consume your content on the device they prefer. Well, lastly here, as you're developing your status update, it is to make sure it's conversational. Whether you're sending out a blog, a video, an infographic, you wanna make sure that you are speaking in a conversational tone on social media. And that's because your status updates will then fit in with your community so much better. You know, they're on there looking at their friends and family's posts. They're on there really making sure they're connecting um, with their friends and family that you wanna make sure your posts fit into that same language. One thing that I really like recommending doing is to read it out loud and see if that re tone really matches a conversational tone that you would have with your best friend. Or read it out loud and say, you know, is this a text I would send to my best friend? And this is a really great filter to go ahead and make sure that you are staying conversational in your status updates. Step three, we are on to the last step here, guys. Thanks for sticking with me, is to develop your posting schedule. So evergreen content, especially that stuff we focus on here at Meet Edgar, is so great for making sure you're driving more traffic to your site. So this little kind of Death Star diagram here, um, these bumps right out here to the right side are social media updates. They should be leading back to your blog so that people can then be nurtured a bit further. It should be leading back to your website of your product or service so people can learn more about you in a way that's really um, makes your sale that much more elegant as you go along because you are doing something calling striking your perfect value marketing ratio. And this comes with the all famous 80-20 rule. I want when you're developing your posting schedule for you to keep this in mind that if you're sharing posts on social media, 80% of them should be value added posts. They should be nothing salesy at all. And that's going to be your funny posts, your inspiring posts, your educational posts. 
And then you've earned the right to promote 20% of products related promotions, whether it's trying to sell to people, whether it's offering them a discount, that type of stuff. So keeping that 80-20 rule in mind here, um, you know, it's going to to be if you're sharing four times a day on Facebook, make sure at least three of those are value added posts. So that last one comes across as a little bit more appreciated by your followers, knowing you're not just there broadcasting out your agenda, but you're there to create a community and have a conversation with them. The reason that Edgar is really great at as a tool to help do this is because when you're stat when you're adding your status updates to our library, you do it on a category based system. And this is great for a couple of reasons. It lets you schedule posts per category to make sure you're getting your right 80-20 mix, but it also helps you develop a really solid content strategy. And that is you can look at your categories and say, okay, it looks like I have a ton more inspirational content than I do questions right now. Maybe I need to sit down and crank out some questions. And you can do this in a space and you can batch this work when it works for you so that you're not just running from meeting to meeting and fitting social media in, but it's an actual strategized piece of your business. So categories work really well, whether you're using a tool like Edgar or you're just using a spreadsheet system, I'd really encourage you to keep track of your posts on a category-based system so that you can nail that 80-20 rule. And what it really helps do to post on a category-based system is taking your feed from just random status updates that don't really have a strategy behind them to status updates over here on the right that are saying, you know, here's a how-to post, here's a quote, here's a blog and a video, here's an inspirational post, here's an infographic. And it's really awesome for your community to consume your content in the medium they want. And it's really awesome that they're able to then see an organic posting feed from you, getting to know your company in a holistic view. With a system like Edgar too, it's really nice to be able to know how often you're gonna post on social media. And again, not just have it be willy nilly when it works for you. So something we like to do here is, you know, consider if you wanna send out six updates five days a week. To get a month's worth of fresh content, that's just having to have 30 updates a week or 120 updates a month. So if you're using this category system that Edgar uses, that means you're only having to add 20 updates per category per month. And this is really awesome because you're able to sit down every month and batch out 20 new updates if you wanted to have fresh content for that next month. If on a month you don't have time to log into your Meet Edgar account and add those 20 updates, the way our tool works is we'll actually then start to resurface your older updates so your new followers can see them as well as those who didn't see it the first time. So it's great to have this strategy and then it's great to have a tool like Edgar to fall back on if life gets in the way as it sometimes does being small business owners. So pop in here to step four. After you've set your brand persona, after you've developed your content and set your posting schedule, that is to not forget to analyze and adjust your strategy. Social media is an experimental place. It is some place that I don't want you just to set it and forget it and never be looking at the data so that you can improve. It's kind of like playing golf in the dark. If you're swinging and you're not seeing where the ball is going, you're never going to get better. So log into your Facebook insights, log into your Twitter analytics, and gain the benefits of knowing which posts are driving the most traffic. I suggest doing this now because looking back now at your 2018 stats is really going to help you move forward into 2019 and have a really forward-focused social media strategy. I also love when people first pop into, if you haven't yet, pop into your Facebook insights and look at the demographic data that's available for you there. It's really cool because you can actually see things like your followers' favorite TV shows or other pages your followers follow too. And all of this information in the analytics section on demographics can help inform your content strategy. So say you find out that your followers like comedy movies over horror movies. Maybe don't post a horror meme, post a comedy meme, stuff like that, so you can be that much more relatable to your community. As you're going through your insights and your analytics and Twitter, another awesome thing about this is you can actually see engagement versus reach on posts. So engagement on posts is gonna be things like shares, likes, comments, stuff like that, the really juicy things that you're looking for, whereas reach is just how many people that piece of content reached. One of the things that organic posting is really great for is to inform your paid strategy on social media. 
So say you see a post that got a ton of likes, but it didn't reach a lot of people. That can be a signal to you to maybe put a couple of dollars behind it so you can boost the reach because you're seeing that engagement and you're knowing that it's value added content that your community is connecting to. So go ahead and create a lookalike audience on Facebook or go ahead and boost that tweet so that valuable content can get seen by more people. Um, super simple to do in Facebook and Twitter. If you need any help, email support at me, edgar.com, and we're more than happy to help you. Um, but essentially, you know, in Twitter, you're just going to go to your analytics, go to your tweets. There's a top tweet section, and then that promote button is right under each tweet. Same with Facebook. It's just Facebook insights, go to the posts, and you'll see that boost button on Facebook to let you know if you do want to put a few dollars behind that content. So as we are talking about analytics, I would be remiss in not touching on algorithms. Algorithms can be so frustrating on social media, but social media is also a free place that we get to share our message and our brand story. So we do have to respect their algorithms choices. Every single social network these days is going towards less about follower count and more about creating community and those back and forth meaningful interactions. So I don't want you to necessarily think that your page doesn't have a lot of followers, so it's not something that's gonna be seen by a lot of people. That's not what they're looking for as much anymore. So if you have a small community, but it's mighty and they engage with you, you are doing a lot better than some of these bigger brands who don't get their conversation going. You know, meaningful engagement on Facebook doesn't just go back and forth on the comments on the post itself. Um, you know, the Facebook algorithm is diving in so deep to this, even in the messenger section. If someone shares a link in the Facebook messenger, that's a signal to whenever that link is shared on people's feeds is that that's a popular link. So, you know, anything you can do to get people sharing your content on their walls, sharing your content in their messenger is actually going to help your page in the future as well. Um, LinkedIn's algorithm is really interesting these days as well. It's actually the only algorithm that takes a real person into consideration. So LinkedIn was purchased by Microsoft recently, and they are changing things up. They're really putting a huge amount of um, strength on video posts and posts that are really personal. And this is where the real person comes in. Their algorithm will identify posts that, that they think are really authentic and are sharing a personal story. And a person will actually go in and look at all those posts and choose the ones that are the most personal to share out to the entire LinkedIn community. This is a huge new change for them. So as you're starting to write your status updates for LinkedIn, make sure they're coming across as really personal and you're sharing your story. Um, and you'll see that kind of reward go quite a bit further. So Twitter is all about consistency and timeliness. Twitter is probably the fastest moving network out there. As we all know, those tweets kind of slide by super quickly. So in order for you to show up in someone's Twitter feed, it's important your tweet gets on there while they're scrolling through before they abandon their site. So make sure your consistency for Twitter is really top notch. And that's what a scheduling tool like Edgar can be great for. So you don't have to keep tweeting and your brand can make sure it's staying up to date. Last but not least, the Instagram algorithm, similar to all these others, of course, that authenticity and that meaningful engagement aspect is in there. Um, something else interesting about Instagram these days is they do take into account something called dwell time on your posts. And this is how often people actually pop on in there and read your content. And this is because they want quality over quantity more than anything on Instagram. So dwell time really comes into play on making sure you're experimenting with longer status updates on your Instagram posts. The status updates that are really winning on Instagram are those that are really um, awesome at connecting authentically with your community. You want to make sure you have that curated content that's humanizing your brand more than anything. Um, and use your Instagram stories along with your um, along with your curated content and work together. You know, there's a site called Linktree out there that I would really recommend. L-I-N-K-T-R-E-E, -E, Linktree. And this will allow you to drive tra traffic from Instagram easier, as opposed to um, outlive the um, time that it's spent on the feed because you're able to say, you know, hey, here's um, XYZ, here there's my tips. If you want to learn more, check out the link in my bio. And what Linktree does is it actually allows you to add in multiple links to that one link. So then your community can go on in there and they can choose which content they want to consume.
It's a little hard to explain. So if you want to see it in action, pop on over to Meet Edgar's Instagram page. Our handle is just at Meet Edgar and click the link in our bio and you'll see what I mean there with it parsing out multiple pieces of content. The really great thing about making sure you're paying attention to your analytics is also that this allows you to identify your greatest posts. You can make a top post hit list then to make sure that your content that people are actually reading and engaging with the most is shared on social media more often than other content that's not providing as much value. So make sure as you're looking at your posts, you're always keeping a list and keeping organized of the posts that are driving the most traffic. You know, using a link shortener, we have our own at Meet Edgar. If you use Eli's our tool, that makes it really easy to track and see which links are getting clicked on the most. Or you can use a site like Rebrandly, or you can use a site like Bitly. But make sure you're taking all of this into consideration when developing a greatest hit list. So really, social media, when it comes down to it, is all about creating that relatable evergreen content, posting it out on social. Hopefully, you're creating really strong, emotional, engagement-worthy posts that get some shares. Those shares, hopefully, are going to get some clicks that are going to lead to your website and convert people into your customers. So this is a virtuous cycle that Meet Edgar software can really help with. And the reason that this becomes so important to reshare in the way that Meet Edgar's tool does is because this can really lead to this happening. And that is just post after post after post can lead to more and more customers coming to your site. And this little guy, Edgar here, is the one who's gonna do that with his eight little tentacles for you. Um, so like I said, if you guys do wanna try out our software, if you do sign up for it, make sure you use the code clickminded and you can get a free month to make sure that it's gonna fit into your strategy. Um, I am the onboarding coach here, so I also am more than happy to hop on a screen share at any time and to help you get the account set up too. Um, but it really is a cool thing to see once you get that consistency on social media, how much more traffic it can drive to your site. All right, so as we're finishing up here, the yeah, but section has arrived. So as I was talking about, um, Edgar is great for repeating your evergreen content on social media, but sometimes you think, I don't want to repeat things too often and annoy people. I want to kind of get that little scary thought out of your mind now and make you think, you know, if you have a three-month content block, you're only reposting that same content four times a year. So if you're staying organized in your Meet Edgar library and you've created enough fresh content that Edgar is repeating it only four times a year, it is very unlikely that any of your followers will remember if they saw it the first time, and even more unlikely that they did see it the first time. I also want you to remember that you read everything you post on social media, but your clients do not. So don't be shy about resharing it for a time when they do have time to read it later on. And last but not least, again, they don't care if they've seen it twice, you've seen the same commercial on TV a few times in your life, I'm sure. If it's a funny and well-written commercial, you're not annoyed by it. Same with your status updates. If it's funny, value-adding, and really producing a great connection with your community, no one's going to be annoyed by it. As we're going along here, I want to touch on Twitter really quickly. Um, Twitter does now have a term of service that says you can no longer send the same tweet to the same Twitter account more than once. So this tweet could no longer be sent more than once. Back in the day, you can see when this was shared on October 4th and versus October 14th, this tweet is still getting a ton of favorites and a ton of retweets here. In order to make sure that you can still employ this strategy to get these great success rates that it did, Edgar also has a tool called Variations. And that is to make sure that you are able to reshare your evergreen content, but stay in compliance with this new terms of service. So when you're actually having your status updates in our library, we have everything set up in order to make sure that you are, um, that your tweets are expiring once they're sent out to Twitter. But to reshare them then, we have this feature called variations. So you can produce this even if you're not using a tool like Edgar. And that is, if you want to reshare a blog post, make sure you're resharing it with a different question, with a different um, introduction, or with a different, um, with a different commentary in front of it, so that once that link is shared out, Edgar will expire the first variation. Once this post pops up in the rotation of your posts again, he can pull the next variation to send out to Twitter. So you're still getting the great benefits of being able to reshare your evergreen blog posts, but you're still staying in line with Twitter's terms of service there. 
It's a really great way to also make sure that you're doing this to add value to your social media on Facebook and LinkedIn. So our variations feature can be used for any network, of course. And when you're making these, you wanna make sure that the language you're using is going to appeal to your community authentically. So that's where that headline generation exercise we did came in. You could produce multiple headlines and use those for your variations because they're gonna be relatable to the article. You wanna make sure that whatever you're doing, it's gonna build trust and link trust and that when someone clicks on your link, that link is leading them to a place that is going to provide that same experience of what they think they're getting from your headline. So make sure they are authentically explaining what's going on in the article. So as we're going along here a little bit more, um, that but section continues, but won't scheduling all my updates make me sound like a robot? And really the answer is no, because you are gonna take the time to develop that brand voice and consider the intention behind the post you're writing and consider multiple ways of expressing that intention. So you wanna make sure those multiple ways of expressing that intention come across really authentically. And that is to make sure that you are putting you in your updates. Putting your personality in there is one of the biggest ways you can gain more attention on social media because people wanna buy from people, not brands. They want to know your voice. They want to know you as a person. So it's really great that you, when you're posting to your audience that you're putting your voice in there and it's all about the quality that you're coming up with of making sure that you're sitting down batching this content out so it matches your voice and it matches the value you want to provide to your community so that it's coming what, so that you're not just kind of willy-nilly posting in the middle of driving somewhere, in the middle of in a meeting or something like that, but all your posts can work together to develop your social media strategy. So really when it comes down to it, social media is great for creating customers who are gonna love you no matter what happens in the market. Thinking back to the reason our software was developed, again, was because our founder, Laura Roeder, had her own educational business and she needed it for herself. And she was actually able to pivot. She's now obviously a software as a service owner. And she was able to bring over some of her clients from her educational business because they believed in her miss mission. And she put herself out there on social media so much that even when the market changes, her customers were still raving fans. So think about the ways that you can build a brand beyond just your product or service. So people like your, you and your brand, and they would follow you no matter if you have to pivot at a time. You want to make sure you're following in love with your customers, not just your product. So that's every social media update you're putting out there is one that's going to provide value. And remember, again, using a tool like Me Edgar is so helpful because you're able to automate your updates so that you can engage authentically later on with your followers. The automation for engagement marriage is really what social media is all about, especially going into 2019. Guys, thank you so much for joining today. If you can't tell, I love, love, love chatting social media. It's one of my favorite things, um, marketing in general. So feel free to reach out if you do have other questions or you want to see a product demo ever. Reach out to support at meagger.com and we're more than happy to um, assist you there. I also really would love to hear from any of you who do end up taking our offer. Remember, if you sign up for Edgar, use the coupon code ClickMinded and you get a free month. And we want to keep the discussion going. So go ahead and tweet at us at me Edgar with the hashtag Edgar webinar with any questions that are you have following up or go ahead and let's be each other's um, accountability partners. Go ahead and let us know what you are going to work on. What tip from this webinar are you going to take into your social media strategy to experiment and really gain the benefits of social media? So guys, you know where to reach us. Comments below if you do have any other questions. Um, we also have some free goodies for you that are in the comment section there. We have a blogging ebook. We have um, a really great social brilliant strategy. And we have a setup guide for me, Edgar. They're all in the comments below. Snag those if you're interested. And um, subscribe to our channel. We do webinars quite a bit here if you liked this. Um, we love feedback too. So let me know if you do have any feedback or topics you're looking to learn about social media in the future. Thanks for joining today, guys. Have a really great day.